everyone. Firstly, thank you so much for your love and your care and support while the Bear family are in ISO. Um, we really feel supported by you all, so thank you. Um, I wanted to show you something. It's a photo. It's, a, it's my Facebook profile photo. So hopefully you can see that. So this is a photo that my husband Bearsy took of me. We're in Hawke's Bay having a coffee in the sun. As you can see, my hair looks amazing. <laughs> my hair looks amazing. Um, my face is angled up so you don't see the double chin. Uh, and also sunglasses on so you can't see the wrinkles in the bags. And I'm laughing hilariously at something. So it really does look like I am living my best life. So that is the photo that I've chosen for my Facebook profile. Interesting that I didn't choose this photo. This photo was taken by Gus um, after I had eaten a half a batch of Anzac biscuits before they made it into the oven, so just the dough. Um, and it's during the day, in the middle of the day, whilst watching something probably wildly inappropriate on Netflix. That didn't um, make it to my Facebook profile. Um, no, I chose that photo because, you know, that, I think that photo represents me better. Or does it? Um, so yeah, they're both real photos uh, of real events. It's just one makes me look better. Um, Ash Wednesday is the beginning of Lent. And Lent is an opportunity for us to be intentional. It's an opportunity for us to get real. Lent is a time for us to prepare for Easter. It's a time when we accept the invitation of self-examination and repentance and we do this through self-denial and fasting and prayer and giving to others and reading scripture. And the invitation um, is to present our very worst profile picture to God, not our best. The invitation is to get real with God. It's God that is seeking transformation in our life. It's God's idea for transformation. And I think sometimes we forget that. I think we think it was our idea, that we think change and transformation, we came up with that concept. No, it's God's idea. And all he asks is for us to be real. We heard in the reading from Isaiah and Matthew about fasting. We've heard that before and it's, um, it's a challenge, isn't it? Those readings are a real challenge because there is no point if it's done uh, not in good faith, uh, if it's hypocritical, if it's all for show, if it isn't real. If it's just for show, if our acts of worship are just for show, then there's no point. And St. Paul understood this too. So... Um, there's no point if it's all for show. The vibe in Corinth at the time that he planted that church and then wrote his letters, the vibe was very much all about the show. Um, for you to, to be heard, uh, you had to be the greatest showman. It was all about how you could razzle and dazzle your audience or your boss or your customers so that they would buy what you were selling. Uh, and Paul pushed back against that because Paul knew that the cross in all its realness must speak for itself. That trust needs to rest in God's transforming power, uh, not in any ability to, to put on a show. And so he pushed back against that culture and he presented the gospel in plain words. He just got real. The church in Corinth really wanted Paul to succeed because they were all about succeeding and winning. And when he didn't succeed, he was honest. He was brutally honest with them. He got real. Um, he said at one point, I'm going to read this, we were under great pressure. This is um, in his second letter to the church in Corinth. He said, we were under great pressure far beyond our ability to endure so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. 
he got utterly real because that's where God continued to meet Paul in the realness of human failure. And so I thought we would read 2 Corinthians 6 um, again just to hear, hear how uh, God needs to meet us in the realness of human failure and what that means for our life. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance and troubles, hardships and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience and kindness, in the Holy Spirit and in sincere love, in truthful speech and in the power of God. With weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonour, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich having nothing, and yet possessing everything. Having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The invitation this Lent is to go to our good, good God with our worst profile picture, to go without the show, to go without the act, to go to God with the realness of our human failing. God and Jesus tells us that that is who is God's beloved. Us, the real us, in the realness of our failings. And God and our resurrected King, Jesus the Christ, promises us that when we do that, all will be well. We can take the very worst of us to God and all will be well. Let's not miss the opportunity to make room for God to love us out of where we are at the moment. Let's enter into this time of self-examination, of repentance, of self-denial, of fasting, of prayer, of giving in the most brutally honest way we have ever done before, because that's where God wants to meet us. He wants to meet us in our honesty and in the realness of human failure so that he can, can transform us for good. What's at stake here is not just our transformation, but the transformation of society. Don't we all long for that? What's at stake here is God's rule on earth now. And if we keep going to God with our best profile picture, with the act, with the show, then true transformation can't come. Let's get to Easter freer, than we've ever been to celebrate God's new life for us. And God's new life isn't an act. It isn't a show. God's new life for us is real. It endures. It sustains. It overcomes. But God needs us to be real for his realness to come. Let's pray. Well, God, as we begin our Lenten journey to Easter, we want to see afresh your relentless pursuit of us and your relentless pursuit of your rule on earth. It is you, Jesus, and your life, death, resurrection and ascension that makes a way for us and for your kingdom to come on earth as in heaven. We are sorry for the act and for the show that we put on not just to our friends and family and colleagues and Facebook friends, but particularly to you. Holy Spirit, release us from the fear that we have of coming to you, God, as our real selves. We offer our lives to you as a living sacrifice. May we be changed. May we bring change. May your kingdom come. Amen.